What's up, Wastelanders? My name is Oscapped, and today is Tuesday, September 3rd. We are all sitting here waiting for the new update from Bethesda for Fallout 76, Milepost Zero. My update's already done on my PlayStation. I have gigabit fiber, so I was fortunate to have it done very, very quickly, but now we are just sitting and waiting. Bethesda was kind enough to drop the patch notes, so I thought that I would make this quick video to talk about some of the things that are in here that we haven't talked about before. So you know all of the regular stuff. You got legendary crafting, you got best builds, you got the vendor history log, and you don't have start your own caravan. We are not sure if we actually have the outpost at all or just no caravans, but as soon as the servers are updated, we will be live streaming. So if you're just watching this, check back for that. If you're watching this in the future, we might still be live streaming, or you can just go and watch the replay. And we will figure out what exactly is there around this particular piece. Next up, we've got file sizes. It is larger to download today because they repackaged the whole thing, but it will be smaller to download updates in the future. Overall, I think that's gonna be a good thing. Legendary crafting. You've heard about this already. But I want to point out that the only way to get the mods is to either trade with another player or to scrap the legendary item that has your desired mod on it. I expect that in the future we're going to see legendary modules dropping from in-game events at a very, very low chance rate, but for today, this is your only shot. So I hope that you muled up a ton of legendary items so that you can scrap and hopefully get something. Do remember, though, that once you've crafted an item and applied a legendary mod to it, you cannot trade or drop that item. It's yours, it's bound to your character. If you drop it, it will be deleted. So this is going to change the entire ecosystem around trading for legendary items. You're gonna have to grind for your own legendaries, scrap them and hopefully learn stuff, and then build your own items. Or people who do this a lot, looking at you West Tech, will have lots of things for sale. Hopefully, they'll be selling them at a reasonable rate, but it is what it is. Let's skip over the best build and the vendor history log and the fact that the caravan isn't happening, and let's get to the interesting bits, which are the combat rebalance items. A lot of stuff went in over rebalancing fire and poison damage and DOT stuff. I've started using the cremator a lot, and they already modified its damage over time effects a few weeks ago, but they've done more. There's a lot here to unpack, but just to summarize, you've got fire and poison damage has been modified where fire damage trends towards shorter durations and higher DPS and poison tends towards longer durations and higher overall damage. And this has been reflected in all of these weapons. The short version is that most of these weapons now deal more damage. In some cases, you have adjustments to armor. For example, the damage dealt by the thorn armor, gauss shotgun, some grenades, and this piece right here, where they reduced the DOT for the cremator to account for how it now scales with weapon damage bonuses. We'll talk about this when we get down below. If you're a user of the kabloom, you're less likely to shoot your foot off. That's pretty cool. If you use the railway rifle, then they reduce the recoil and base AP cost. And if you use the automatic piston receiver, then they reduce the fire rate and remove the AP cost reduction. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, but it doesn't sound like it. Headhunter Scythe damage now deals bleed, which is great. And they adjusted the damage dealt by electrified legendary armor. Now the creatures in the game have also had their health resistances and damage updated. We saw this on the PTS server a few days ago, and I'm impressed that they rolled it out as part of this update. This is a smaller list than what we saw for the PTS server, but you now have a more proportional distribution of damage, damage resistance, and health for this list, and I'm sure we will see this roll out for other creatures in the future. Now here's where I said that the creature weapons have also been updated. All of these are DOT weapons used against you, and they've also updated them so that they will do more damage, with fire damage having a higher DPS, for damage over time, and poison damage having a DOT which deals more overall damage per hit. If there's any creatures in there that you don't like already, I'm sure you will like them even less. We've got some changes to perks. 
vaccinated thirst quencher, iron stomach, and natural resistance. We knew those were coming. And here we've got some changes to the region bosses, which we also knew were coming, where they have had their damage resistance dramatically dropped, but their overall health dramatically increased. So it's easier to hit them, but you got to do it a whole lot more. We've got some bug fixes and improvements for your camp and for combat, where here you see what they alluded to with the cremator earlier. Damage over time effects now scale with bonuses to weapon damage. So if you have something that multiplies your weapon damage, it's also going to multiply DOT. And for that reason, they reduced the base DOT rates because previously they were not scaling with the weapon boosts. Some other interesting items in here address an issue where DOT effects dealt by players would not scale to match the creature's level. I don't know if we were doing too little damage or too much, but that's interesting. Apparently, Vampire's Legendary Mod could stack multiple times, and DOT damage dealt by NPCs could be lower than intended. There's a lot of stuff going in this update about combat and rebalancing, and I think we're going to see that where the game is going to become more realistic. If you're a high-level player who's used to just murdering things by looking at them, you might find yourself a little bit more challenged. Melee weapon DOT damage now scales with strength. That's smart. Fixed an issue with Grenadier that resulted in explosions scaling up to twice as large as intended. I've seen explosions where, like, I'll throw a Molotov across the map, and it just swallows everything, myself included. Though that may be part of this fixed an issue that could cause some explosions to be scaled smaller or larger than intended. All right, they just kind of gloss over how they changed how Explosive Bullets mod now interacts with various weapons. This is a big deal. Explosive Bullets now deal consistent damage. I think it's 20% across all weapons to which it's applied. Improved Chainsaw Durability. That's nice. I have a flaming chainsaw that I keep around just to use on Myrlurks and other things that I want to get up close and touchy with them. And it's nice that that's not going to break quite as fast. This is big. Perk effects will now persist when you exit the world and return. Nothing sucks more than having a bonus and then you just log out and log back in or get bounced off the server and it's gone. Here's another quality of life change. If you are logging into a server and it is a nuke zone, you'll be asked if you want to bounce to a different server. Hopefully they can take that and expand it to camps where if you're logging into a server and your camp can't be placed, they'll let you bounce to another server. They can do it with survival tents, so it shouldn't be that hard to do it with camps. And this is interesting. We released a video about the ProSnap camera a couple weeks back, and people were asking what happens if you lose it or you get rid of it, and you can find it on corpses. I did not know that if you got yourself stuck in a situation where you completed the bucket list quest and deleted the camera, that you would no longer find the Broken Snap Deluxe camera. I've not experienced that, but it looks like some people have, and now they have fixed it. Here's another one. Extended the no camp zone around meat week to prevent camps from impacting the event. And by impacting, they mean AFK, because there are no enemies that come into that zone. They will probably do this for Mothman Equinox and anything else where people are AFKing. I don't know if you can get a camp close enough to Fosnoct, but if you can, expect that that's going to end as well. You can now get duplicate plan drops from Holiday Gifts. Beyond this, we've just got some quest updates, other bug fixes. They do call out that Giuseppe now sells mystery bobblehead boxes for 20 stamps to a maximum of six per day. And apparently there's an issue of Pip-Boy lag. They ask that if you experience that to contact their customer support team. But you know what? If you experience any persistent bug with the game whatsoever, slam their customer support team so that they know that these things are pissing us off. Don't accept that Bethesda just equals bugs Bethesda, because it shouldn't be that way. I've started saying bugs are what we pay for, and I mean it jokingly, but everybody knows it's a pain in the butt. So let them know what doesn't work, and keep letting them know until they fix it. There you go, patch notes. Hopefully the servers will be online momentarily, and we will be live streaming. So I look forward to seeing you all there. My name is Oscapped, one half of Gamer Aviator, and until we are back online, Stay safe out there, Vault Dwellers. In the heart of West Virginia, where the shadows creep and sway, lies a land of rusted dreams, where the brave dare not stray. Appalachia, oh, it's a treacherous ride, with dangers untold and nowhere to hide.